Boom. Right. So, Otis, I'm going to check your scores again. You So you gave Loma for the, the sauce, you gave Loma 15, or I mean 10. 10, yeah. All right, <clears throat> and 15 to Lopez. So this is what we call the ability to crack the code, the intangibles, the ability to make adjustments in the ring. Who has that? Oh, Shane, we'll start with you this time. All right, all right. Um, well, I've, I mean, this one's a, a pretty easy for me. I've seen Loma crack the code before. I've seen him crack it on many occasions, and he okay. does it sometimes effortlessly. So, I gotta, I gotta give it to him. Fifteen, okay. 10, Loma. Okay, Loma, fifteen, ten. All right, go ahead, Lo Otis. Well, I, I believe the same. Uh, you cannot discount uh, uh, Loma's uh, IQ, his ability to to do various things in the ring uh, okay. off the cuff. Uh, I'm going to okay. go even even farther in, though. I'm going to go 20 to, uh, to 5 for, for Loma. Because, because I believe that, that he has that much, uh, that much IQ. Like, wow. like to, uh, to 5. Early. I might have to. I might have to shoot this one to Lopez. Yeah, I'm, I, 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 hey, I think I think you really you, know, you, know, you, know, you, can, you yeah. can't discount championship rounds. You know, no, you and, can't. And, and that's no. all this this guy has. You know, and then people think that that doesn't matter, but when you got that many championship rounds, and you know what to do. You know, when you get past that ten round, or you get you get a you know just when you're clearing the eighth round, and you and you're thinking about the scores of who won what round, you're breaking it down in your head, and you say, okay. Well, I got to do this. Or you might be ahead. Here's another yeah. thing that people understand. You've probably heard about this too, Shane. It's uh, called taking rounds off. Like people would be like, man, why are you doing right now, right? So, so you, you might be ahead. Like Lama might be whipping Lopez. Yeah. And, and instead of being a target for him or being yeah. over aggressive, he might just, you know, what I call the Amarillo mode, yellow. He yeah. Might, you might, you might cruise. And, and let yeah. and let Lopez just throw it air, you know. Yeah. And, and, and Alama, we all know, has that matrix ability. So I think that yeah. he's going to be able to do a lot of those things. But sometimes guys do that, Otis, as well, because they don't have other tricks and things to work on that they've worked on, wrinkles in their game, and still be able to win rounds. And Loma definitely has the ability to be in that matrix. And really make it frustrating. So I hope Tiafimo don't come in there. You might go in there and say, I'm going to go ahead and throw it at him. Pull back. The same thing that Kid Chocolate happened to Kid Chocolate when he fought Daniel Jacobs. Jacobs was like, yo, I'm going to go out there and just throw it at him. And I was sitting inside of um, a sports bar. And Jacobs came out. And I was like, well, Kid Chocolate don't go down. And Rashad had sparred Kid Chocolate, mm -hmm. and he was like, uh, nah, Kid Chocolate going to get him. He's going to be all right. He's strong. And when I seen him hit him, and and, and that shot hit him, and he wobbled, I was like, well, he's going to grab him and tie him up. And he didn't have that wrinkle to wow. tie him up and prevent him from doing it. Yeah. And so it worked out for Daniel Jacobs that I got the power. I'm going to see what Loma got. No one's went out. No one's can come out and just pressed him. Boom, 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 and to see what he really can do. And instead of allowing him to get in his comfort zone and you start fighting his fight, that's why I think him and Pacquiao would be a hell of a fight because I think Pacquiao would come out and bring him to smoke, throw those shots high and low like he did with Keith Thurman, and show him things and not let him get into his boxing zone. And that's the worst thing you can do with a fighter: allow him to fight. His own fight. Shouts out to Peter. Peter Lucas in the building. TSOB, another TSOB from down under Australia. Welcome, mm -hmm. Peter. It's good to see you, brother. But at the same time, Loma does have this thing. But I feel like T.O. would really make that attempt and say, I'm going to see what this kid got. I'm going to see if he everything everybody's talking about. Or is he up here because no one's tried to really bring their manhood their bravado, their savoir faire to them. Who is willing to bring that smoke? When it's all said and done, Lomachenko will be for it's all said and done. 
Salido bring, bring the, the smoke to him. I know it was earlier, you know, and he's actually probably developed quite a bit since exactly. that fight. But um, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add something that a lot of people don't think about when it comes to, to boxing. Um, we are all familiar with uh, anthropology, which is the study of culture, right? If you mm -hmm. look at all uh, uh, East European fighters, and, and, and if you're at home, this is strictly mm -hmm. off knowledge. This is not off the cuff. Like, I, I, I've studied a lot of things in my time. So uh, if you look at culture, diet, and, uh, and just uh, built, a lot of uh, East Euros, they have, and, and, and you know this because you've trained a lot of people, Eric. Yeah. They're really thin in the, in the upper ribs to in the, the hip. upper torso. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Unless you're heavyweight, they're really thin. Yeah. So it made sense that what Salido did was attack the body because that's what happens. Mm -hmm. Now, people don't realize that what you eat in your diet as a culture, like if you don't eat a lot of red meat or if you don't eat a lot of pork or anything like that, like most you know, uh, East Euros or Russian or Ukrainian or, or things of that nature, right? They don't eat a lot of mm -hmm. that stuff. So you don't get thick in the uh, in the midsection yeah. and things of that nature. Yeah. Uh, you get really lean and, and narrow. So I think that that's yeah. been something that a lot of people haven't taken advantage of is attacking the body of Lomachenko yeah. early because they yeah. get so frustrated with his movement and, 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 and his uh, ability to, to counter. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's so you look at a fight from the true very last compound. So you'd be great in the corner in a training camp as well. And I know you work with kick guys anyway, but what you look at, these are key things in fights. That's mm -hmm. why people have who have high IQs on physiology do well in the ring. Guys like Archie Moore, high IQ about physiology, basically was a doctor inside of the ring. He knew so many different layers of the game. And some of these guys, I try to introduce knowing about meals and eating. That's why I got a series called Food for Fighters. And if you haven't seen it yet, just type in Food for Fighters and it'll pop up and you'll see a bevy of just how to go about eating as an athlete in camp and when you're not in camp. So you can maintain or develop certain things that's necessary, teaching you about macros and understanding the physiology of the body when it comes down to being an athlete and knowing about your ligaments and knowing about the balls and sockets of your body so you can actually elevate it. And it does take experts around you. The thing about it is you got to surround yourself with them because if not, you're going to learn the hard way. So that was a great point, Otis. You're always spot on when it comes down to those things. Um, I got let's, something let's I got something Go to throw in, in there. Um, so we've seen what happens. or So I'm going to start with saying this. A lot of great mm -hmm. fighters, right, can come back from being down. One, Andre yeah. Ward. Uh, Floyd Mayweather didn't go down, but he almost did with my father, right? He got he got cracked. And guess what? He got killed three <laughs> times and came back to life before he landed. Hey, exactly. I've never seen but, anything like it. But guess who won that fight? On on Andre Ward, he Proud. got up, wiped his gloves off, and and went to yeah. work. Yeah. Uh, you know, Floyd Mayweather, same thing. We've seen actually Lomachenko do this: go down, and yeah. guess what? He stopped the guy in I think the next round or or in the ninth round, whatever the case is, right? So we've seen his ability to make adjustments at a high level. You've been off the on the ground, mm -hmm. and you wipe your gloves off. You say, "Okay, yeah, you got me." Yeah, yeah. Oh, but he'll get what? up. But guess what? Boom. Right. Now, what do you think will happen if Teofimo gets knocked down? Do you think he can do the same thing? Oh, do you think he has confidence. that? Do you think it'll he has that confidence. same mentality? I I think he'll get up. I think it'll shake his confidence only because he knows people haven't seen him down. Mm -hmm. And I think when you're young, your ego gets in the in the in the way, mm -hmm. and you start to feel that pressure. So I think it'll put more pressure on him than it would on Loma because Loma's been down. He got mm -hmm. up. Not only did he win the fight, but he stopped him in the 10th round. And uh, he stopped a real serious pugilist boxer. And that has already been proven. So it hasn't been proven for Lopez. So, so you guys crack the code. We got my man.